Hello and welcome everybody, this is Max from Woodsman's Finest. Welcome to another video in the grip to tip video series of my modern trad videos. Um, today we're talking about a Stalker stick bow, 62 inch um, Coyote FXT with static recurve limbs. So if you're interested, keep watching. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in. This is Max from Woodsman's Finest. Today, we're talking about a Stalker Stick Bow's um, Coyote FXT in 62 inches, um, coming at 48 pounds at 28 inches. I pull probably 27 and a half, and I scaled this one at 47 um, pounds, so it comes on, comes in right on the money. Um, so this is a gorgeous bow with the um, static recurve limbs, and it has appeared on the channel before. With longbow limbs so i want to go over the riser a little bit quicker today and then get into the limbs now before i start and i really don't want to make these rambling videos um, i want to make them nice and crisp um, and the reason i started this whole channel um, just to do a little bit of a disclaimer disclosure whatever you want to call it um, the reason why i started the series on my channel was that I really love archery videos. Um, I'm going on YouTube as often as I can to see different bows, just see arrows fly and see bows in hands of people. Um, and I love getting information. Um, I do not like the videos where it's just a whole bunch of like, this is an accurate bow, this points and shoots where you're looking at. Um, and then like just backing it up with a whole bunch of that's right um, and um, uh, so on and so forth, repeating myself. Um, I love properly done videos and the reason why I started this whole thing was first of all I love archery videos, second of all I know that these bows are not cheap um, and it is so much easier to make a commitment I feel like to support all of these craftsmen and craftswomen as well um, by just seeing it in hand, um, maybe someone who has a little bit of experience with it and just bringing it um, to the internet that way so you can look it up, um, make your mind up, um, see if you like the look. Um, if you like the sound um, and if you like what the person is um, saying about the product. Me as an independent craftsman um, trying to make a living in a very small niche, um, being a one-man show, doing my own pictures, my own videos, website, the product itself, um, etc, etc. I know how hard it is to produce a quality product and then go out and do all of your promotion yourself and all of this kind of stuff. So I bought this bow, full disclosure. Um, I didn't buy all of the equipment that I'm using um, and this is also why there's a couple of names in the beginning of this video. Now, if you're claiming or people claiming to be unbiased and the whole like uh, trendy word bias, um, I don't think anything ever is unbiased. Um, I think bias is life. Um, honestly, um, why I'm doing this, why we're shooting bows is because we're already biased towards something. We like something over something else until we learn better or we learn different and then we're changing our opinions and our passions and all of this kind of stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. So all of the names you see in the beginning, um, those are all people that I approached because I have been shooting their equipment for years. Um, I've been doing archery for 20 years, anything from bare bow to like split fingers, cedar arrows, com um, longbow competitions. I love it all. So I've been shooting all of this equipment and I really like the integrity of those brands, how much um, time and um, effort they put into making a quality product without cutting any corners. So if I can do here something to bring the name out there a little bit more and help them out with like, you know, reaching their goals um, and making a living for themselves and for their families within a very small niche, then I absolutely, absolutely wholeheartedly do that. So. Please don't get irritated by a couple of names up front. Those are all friends of mine. Um, and they became friends after 
I was using their product, not before in order to use their product. So that's a very important thing for me. Now, I bought this bow um, several years ago, um, and it actually came with the longbow limbs we talked about last time. And then very quickly after, I saw on a classifieds ad um, a couple of um, static recurve limbs that fit the Coyote FXT. So this come the Jackal and the Coyote are both um, risers by Stalker that both take longbow and um, static recurve limbs because they have the same geometry, they just have a little bit of a different grip. So this one is actually um, a Jackal, but the grip and everything also has a lot of the Coyote thing. So it's an older riser, so it's right in between as far as I understand. Um, I call it a Coyote, it technically says Jackal on it. So it's really coming down to what grip you like more. Other than that, the geometry is completely the same. Now, let's just um, get into it, finally, Max. Um, so the riser is a sculpted piece of craftsmanship. Um, I'm not gonna call it art because um, it is very highly usable. And um, in this case, as I said in the first um, video, it is actually an ebony FXT um, riser, and like an ebony, center layer with um, two laminations or like two blocks um, in the FXT type of lamination that South does um, with Cocobolo on both sides. So it's very hefty, um, which is amazing because it just means that the bow um, is a lot more vibration free and stands a lot better for me. Um, it is definitely lighter than all of my, um, my ILF rigs. So shooting a bow like this is gonna be a little bit more challenging. I'm shooting it over the shelf. Um, etc. etc. There is no weights attached and this and that so having a heavier riser is definitely Helping me what is also really cool about this riser for me is that it's cut pretty much or a lot past center I don't, I'm not entirely sure how much it is, but it's definitely several millimeters um, so my axis diameter five millimeter inside diameter arrows are sitting in the bow um, very very close to center which makes it very um, it makes it very forgiving. I hate that word um, with archery. It's just so misused. Um, but it is very forgiving as far as spine selection. So um, that is something that I really like about the riser. In this case, there's no attachments, there's no holes, no threads, but South does all of that custom as well. So again, I bought this bow, etc., etc. I just know South as well. So I know that he does um, bushings, um, he does threading holes for rests like a springy rest etc etc so there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do um, custom with these risers now there is a variety of different handles or like handle shape grip shapes available so all of this is entirely custom as well in this case we're talking about a quite low grip with a flat back that i really like because this is what i'm used to from my ILF, ilf rigs and i really like shooting um, a flat back grip it just gives me a more repeatable pressure point for my palm um, not much else to say except for um, when it comes to bows uh, never I never use or let's say it differently I never say like a bow is more forgiving or it points better or like a bow is accurate uh, we gotta dissect it a little bit the bow itself is never accurate the arrow itself is never accurate what is accurate is you but the specific arrow tune, bow tune, arrow to bow tune, um, and a lot of other factors and pro um, proportions within your rig are gonna make it easier for you or like help you being accurate. One of those things um, that is a lot talked about is deflex. So for a wooden bow, this bow has a really decent amount of reflex. It does a uh, deflex, sorry. It does not have as much for example, like, like a border for example, like but it has a very decent amount. So measured between the fade outs, um, if I would draw a straight line between those, um, I have about an inch to the throat of the grip, which is really a good amount of deflex, but without um, sacrificing any performance by having two relaxed limb pad angles. So um, the bow has in general quite a little bit of deflex um, and the limb pad angles not being too straight, but also not too, um, relaxed comes out to a very good compromise in my opinion um, between um, smoothness of draw um, a very consistently climbing um, poundage that you're putting on inch by inch that you're drawing if you want to know more about these things in detail and very highly scientific 
please check out Cody Greenwood over on the Trad Lab because he is doing a much greater job and uh, much more scientifically and specific than I'm doing right now. But just in general, this is what the, the feeling I'm getting with this bow, um, especially in combination with the two limbs that South is actually offering. Now, deflex is a very important one. The other thing that, in my opinion, apart from arrow tune um, and getting, you know, like your bear shafting and your paper tuning and all of that done, and of course, great form, a very really important thing for me is my holding position. If I have a comfortable holding position where I can comfortably increase tension while doing the whole mental part of my shot, this is helping me being accurate. It's not the bow again that's being accurate. That is nonsense. Especially the last year or two, I've really realized how much um, a comfortable holding position is actually helping me with being accurate by helping me running my mental part of my shot. I repeated myself there, sorry. Now coming out to the limbs, because this is a grip to tip series, right? Um, now coming out to the limbs, these are gorgeous. Um, these are actually, I think, Tiger Myrtle. I'm not even entirely sure. Um, I didn't know what they were when I picked them up, but they have a beautiful contrast to the dark colors of the riser. Um, naturally camouflaged, nothing crazy fancy, but really beautiful. Um, two laminations of bamboo, um, glass, no carbon, none of that. Uh, to just start here at the um, connection, we've got a regular bolt down connection. There's two pegs here and then there is um, one 5 16 bolt, completely regular. Um, then there is of course a wedge uh, where the laminations start. I'm not entirely sure what material it is, it's actually black. It might be um, phenolic, something like that, which would make a lot of sense. And then we've got a pretty long fade out actually here like a pretty long wedge um, like I said two layers of glass um, two layers of beautiful bamboo and then coming out into the limb into the limb tips you're actually seeing um, and I put a couple of videos here um, to just um, showcase a little bit better first of all we've got a really interesting profile um, all the way to the recurve it almost looks like a reflex deflex longbow and then goes into this really extreme hook um, now the static recurve tip um, or like the static recurve limb comes with a tip that is highly reinforced in order to keep this stiff um, part and doesn't really open up the same way a modern or like I wouldn't say modern but like a standard recurve limb does so you can see there is another um, wedge actually in the limb tip there is several laminations and there's um, a beautiful overlay um, in I think it's like white and black micarta and then some gorgeous some um, cocobolo to actually um, match that riser that was by chance or like accidental that wasn't of course um, ordered that way because um, like I said I bought this pair used. Now what I find interesting with these static recurve limbs is that they very much behave to a certain degree like a reflex deflex longbow, longbow limb the way they pull um, it's a very linear um, draw cycle nothing that you would um, expect from a, a modern or like a different um, or a conventional recurve limb um, where it with a bigger hook or something kind of opens up on the back a little bit it is very linear um, and it doesn't really feel like there is any stack so right from the beginning as you expecting from a recurve limb there's a little bit of a wall but coming out there's maybe a little bit of relief right here as I'm coming to about 27 but then you can keep going um, I don't feel at all like coming back this is 27 and a half I feel like I can keep going here without an issue out to whatever 20, um, 29 30 I don't know there is no stack that's what I want to say I think South builds these in 58 60 62 and maybe even 64 um, that's all something you can find out on the website um, but I find them to be very interesting on a draw cycle um, very comfortable pretty quick um, I can see that from my arrow choice just a word about the arrow setup um, the quiver is of course Eagle Flight my favorite quiver light um, doesn't do much um, with the the balance of the bow it doesn't want to tilt over like that like the heavier quivers like cellways and, and all that stuff 
Um, nothing against those, but I just really am picky about um, the stability and the balance of my bow. So I do not like quivers that are tending to be very heavy and too many arrows in that. Um, I do tree stand hunting. Um, I feel like four arrows are plenty for me. Never had an issue with that. Um, and I have selways and so on and so forth. Um, and a great northern I think on some ILF bows I have but they in general have a lot more mass weight in the riser and a couple of um, weights up front and stabilizers and whatnot um, and so even with the heavier quiver they still want to balance completely straight with this bow that's a lot more tricky I want to say and with a long bow that's even lighter than this with a much smaller riser it is um, mandatory in my opinion if you want to have a nice balance in your bow that you don't use too heavy of a quiver. I really like how um, how compact it is. I have had it for 14 years I think or 12 or I don't know for a very long time. Still have it. Um, no issues on the connection or anything. Another thing I like about this quiver is that um, the rubber connection on the limb really dampens down vibration very well so it almost acts like a um, limb saver in a, in a way. I'm shooting Axis Traditional um, 400 spine, 30 inches long out of it. I only have a 27 and a half inch draw, but I aim with the tip of my arrow. You know, um, that's just what it is. And um, on the back, of course, while fletching, um, a couple of wraps. I uh, like bright arrows, and they help me um, analyzing my arrow flight. And on the front, there is a uh, insert outsert by top head with a top head collar um, and a 175 point. So we're coming out to um, 240 grains, which. Um, is a great combination, tunes really well out of this bow, um, bare shaft is flying beautifully. So that um, enough about the arrow choice, but what I mean by that is I'm shooting the same arrows out of other bows with similar draw weight and they're behaving very similarly. So by um, having the same arrow choice for different bows, I can kind of tell the energy that they're producing, that they're building and they're putting back into the arrow, that is not scientific. There is still difference in speed a little bit um, and um, the bows are very difficult to compare. But I know that this one is producing a good amount of energy, um, very comparable to modern bows or like to ILF rigs with carbon and foam um, by just checking the arrows that I can shoot out of the two different bows and if they're very similar then I know that they're actually producing similar energy that's at least my bro science here um the arrows weigh 555 grains i scaled them today um the bow is about 47 pounds um great combination we're right at about 11 and a half um to almost 12 grains per pound and i would say that is very very decent um the the gaps i'm getting the speed that i'm getting um really very respectable then again um, i'm running the bow at uh, seven and a half brace height this is right in the middle of the recommended um, area and i think that um, i could probably go down a little bit still with brace height and get a couple feet per second more out of it but i really like um, the sound of the bow and i really like the way it behaves so other than that there's not too many things you can tune about them um string I want to mention that as well. This is a JS Custom String out of Australia by Jake Spinks. I've used his strings for about four years now and I still have the same set of strings. So that tells you how extremely durable they are. They're 652 Spectra um, and I have, as you can see, two sets of very small um, cat whiskers on here and um, they're mounted at exactly a... Um, Oh no, on this this string I probably did it kind of like generically still. Usually I mount them at a fifth and a fourth of the string length between the touching points and that gets really good results for me. Um, is there anything else to say? Um, the good, the bad and the ugly. I'm still shooting the bow. Bows are going coming in and going out for me um, on a very regular basis. The fact that I have this bow for several years now um, and have also... Um, taken my my only big game animal so far with um should tell you a lot i find this to be not only gorgeous but also very very decent um in quality in um in performance and in just overall likability um 
so I don't want to get rid of it. I, I don't see any reason. And that should tell you quite a lot, um, especially with my the, the way that I go through bows. Um, this is not really supposed to be too much of a review anyway, so giving you my opinion. I don't try to sell you something. I think at the end of the day, um, if you enjoy the shooting, if you enjoy um, having a look at a bow like this, um, maybe just being excited with me together a little bit, um, then this is exactly what I gonna um, what I want to get out there. So um, yeah, that's pretty much all from me. I want to give a big shout out though to the push, um, and let me ramble for two minutes, and then I'm gonna um, get out of here. The push archery. When I started archery about 20 years ago. Um, I was very quickly frustrated with two things. First of all, um, my shooting, the lack of information, especially here in Austria, um, bumping into people who constantly would just give me um, very controversial ideas about what I'm supposed to do, who is good, who is bad, what is good, what is bad, what I should shoot, what is um, garbage, what is, and, and so on and so forth. So it it very quickly frustrated me um, how divided all the different types of archery were and the lack of information. So I always oriented myself towards the North American market because I liked shooting for hunting. I wasn't hunting at the time at all, but I was just fascinated by it. I was fascinated um, by tuning and like shooting. I'm making really good looking trad equipment. I made my own cedar arrows. I crested, I, I dipped stuff. I shot longbow competition, etc., etc. And my shooting was the next thing, split finger instinctive never worked for me and I almost, with all this fr frustration piled up, um, I almost hung it up. And then in 2016, right after the video by the push um, came out, I was in Japan, I lived in Japan at the time, and I found that video and, and I was just, it was saved for me. My first love, my biggest passion in life, because this is not just a hobby for me, this is something I do every day, this is a lifestyle for me and they saved it for me. I bought my, my first bow after I got rid of pretty much all of them, my first ILF bow, maybe a couple of weeks later and um, and so on and so forth. And ever since then, I've been shooting every day. I've bought um, two of their courses. Uh, I listened to every single podcast several times. I watched every single video. Um, I just wanna give a shout out because I've not come across a platform that is so inclusive and managed so well to bring together all types of archery, all types of single string archery, sighted, unsighted, um, and given everybody pretty much a, a platform um, to come together to learn um, as far as they can um, at the point, and then whenever something new is coming out, whenever um, they find out new stuff with, uh, Whenever they um, nerd out um, and create new platforms um, for testing, etc., they always share it with everybody. So, even even if there is a couple of courses that you have to pay for, the majority of information that they produce is completely free. Um, and recently, I was asked by Tim if I want to come on the content creation team, and I thought about it because I didn't want to look like I'm like inside a brand or I'm like producing videos for someone or to sell something. This was supposed to be kept independent um, and just fun. Um, but at the on, on the other hand, I was so humbled um, and so happy that they reached out to me that I wholeheartedly agreed to and said like, of course, I would love that. So this is why you also find um, the push logo now in the beginning, because these videos will also air on the push and I hope they're gonna reach a lot more people and I hope that everybody has a really fun time watching. So thank you, Tim, thank you, Matt, for all you do. Um, all the, 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 the barriers and the, the boundaries that you broke down um, and all the people that you brought together and um, congratulations um, for the incredible platform and the very far reaching um, voice that you, that you have now. Um, I'm pretty sure when you started with that video in that barn, you didn't know what kind of monster you were creating, but um, I salute you. And so with that, um, I hope this video was fun for you to watch. I want to keep these a little bit critical, critical, a little bit crisp. I don't want to do any rambling. I'm trying to really choose what I'm saying in these videos. 
um, and I hope that um, you enjoy that and let me know um, if there is something you want to see on the channel if there is something you would like to see more um, if you like the balance of the shooting the rambling etc etc um, and if there's anything I can go into a little bit more detail about or that I should shut up about a little bit more because at the end of the day if these videos suck for you to watch then there's really no point of producing them so um, you can find me on woodsmansfinest.net there's um, all of my tools um, all of my course videos after all I'm an independent craftsman um, this is how I make my living by um, carving stuff making knives designing and making tools so check that out you can also find my course page with over a hundred hours of spoon carving sharpening and tool um, use videos on Boon TV uh, if you go through my Instagram channel Woodsman's Finest you actually get um, the first month of all access to all of the hundred hours um, for just five bucks so um, that would be awesome if you checked it out all the relevant links are below and uh, like and subscribe it's the most important thing and I'm gonna see you in the next video cheers thanks for watching